from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Vayakel Pkudei, the power of labor. If we look at our parsha, we have three questions. Number one, if basically this is a parsha about building in the Mishkan, the construction of a home for God, then why is it that it begins with gathering the Jews to tell them about Shabbat? Number two, why is it that one of the major themes and key words of this, of this parsha seems to be the question of melacha, work? If we look particularly at chapter 35, verse 30, and on for about the next 20 verses, the word melacha appears, work appears over and over. The work of, of thought, thoughtful work. A thoughtful, a crafty work. Doers of all kinds of work. Uh, uh, people who at Kol Avodat, Melechet Avodat HaKodesh, it's the work of the, of the holy, holy work. He, he then says that it's Melechet Avodat HaKodesh, again, the same phrase. Midei Havodat Limlacha, there's too much work being done. The Al Yasu Od Melacha, don't do any more work. The Dayam Lachol Melacha, they had enough work. Work, work, work. Why the focus on the word Melacha and work? And finally, is this the end of the, the book of Exodus? We were trying to get out of Egypt, and in the end, we did work, and we made a Mishkan, we made a tabernacle? That's the end of the book? These are the three questions. The rabbis, in answering the first question, why is Shabbat an introduction to this parsha? they say, well, when we say don't do any work on Yom Shabbat, don't do work on the Shabbat, we want to know what, what is work? Oh. We want to know. Look at the Mishkan. They, they, they weave things. They build things. They carve things. These are the kinds of things. The 39 things the rabbis identified. The 10 processes involved in baking bread. The 10 or so process, processes involved in, in making a, uh, a, a, a piece of wool, a, a, a cloth. All kinds of different work. And it was all done here. So the rabbis are saying that the purpose of the work is to tell us something about Shabbat. The purpose of having Shabbat here is to tell us what type of work it is. I'd like to suggest that perhaps a person who's perhaps uh, not exactly, in our, in, our, or exactly in, our, in our camp, but someone who uh, has nonetheless a thoughtful comment here, cited by Necham Levovich, perhaps this is one of the keys to understanding this parsha. It's a citation from Moses Mendelssohn. He says in his, in his B or in his commentary to this, this parsha, he says that God commanded us that just as we bring first fruits, bikurim, that if I'm a farmer and I have uh, fruits, my first fruits should go to God. So too, the Jewish people are about to embark on a journey into the land of Israel. And there they'll have a lot of work to do to establish a state of Israel. And the question is, will their first labor be to build a bridge? Will their first labor be to drain a swamp? And the answer is, God says, let your first labor be the labor of love, of building a house for God. And ultimately, your land, the land of Israel itself, will turn into a house for God You'll do a lot of secular work. You'll build bridges. You'll plant fields. You'll conquer cities. But it will begin on this holy note of giving your first work to God. And in that sense, why does the book end with this? Because this is the inauguration of the project of the work of the land yet ahead of us. The, perhaps we've somehow been blind to this to this key message of the, the inauguration of holy work and of secular work, which is holy due to its having been inaugurated in a holy way, because we tend to focus on the spiritual and disconnect it from the physical. We say there's the spiritual, there's the mikdash, and there's life. Rabbi Salvechik pointed out that whether it's in our synagogues, whether it's on the Mishkan, 
there, as Rav Mital said, there's a, there are windows to the world. There's a link between the holy work and this profane work. The holy work inaugurates the secular work. And the whole idea of work is not somehow something secular. That too is a mitzvah. The, uh, in the Midrash Agadol, there's a citation of, of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the very author of the Mishnah, who says, Sheshet Yamim Te'asem Lacha. Here it's stated in the, in the passive. There are other sections where it's stated as a command. Thou shall work. Doing work for six days is not somehow just a backdrop for not doing work on Shabbat. It's a mitzvah to do work. Whether this is codified in the 613 mitzvahs and the fact that it's not, notwithstanding, it's still, it is an important midrash that there is a, a mitzvah to engage in work. How many times did the rabbis say how chaviv, how, how beloved, how great is melacha? Uh, we have so many different, different statements. For instance, melacha is so great that no one can go in the Holy of Holies. But he who, who is engaged in fixing the Holy of Holies, he can go in. He says that the melacha is so great, says the Midrash, because all the creatures of the world were not given work, only the human being. Melacha is so great that the Shekhinah, the divine presence, didn't rest on the Jews, said the Midrash Agadol, until we did that melacha. Until you do work, there's no divine presence. Uh, the uh, the, the melacha is so great that the generation of the flood was destroyed because they stole things from others who had rightfully worked for it. Uh, it brings honor to those who do it. Uh, he says, he, he says that uh, we know Yafet Talmud Torah and Derech the, the the ethics of the fathers is filled with citations of rabbis who thought that work is so important, that, 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 that it's so important, to, so beautiful to do work and to engage in Torah. You should embrace work. You should, you should love the concepts of work. And this is, is telling us that work is holy, that you begin on the one hand by sanctifying this work as you begin the secular work, and it's also telling us the importance of work. The Torah begins by saying, do work. That's true, on the seventh day we don't do work, but do work. Now don't think that, that you can make it all, that you'll work harder and harder, and you'll do everything that can possibly be done, as is a basic core belief of our modern society, that, that we can do it all, we can understand it all, we can grasp it all, we'll just work another day, we'll work harder, we'll work another hour, and we're going to solve it all. We're going we're gonna to get to the very ends of the universe. We are going to solve every single medical problem. We're going to understand every single thing of the human psyche, the human body. Come Shabbat and says, no, you won't. You'll do work. It's a holy enterprise. You'll try to get there. But the human work is never completely done. Only God can get to the nth degree of knowledge, accomplishment of creation. That's God's work. That, but the human being, has to follow God's model. We have to have some humility. In the end, we stop and we say, I know it's not all going to get done. I know I'm never going to get to the end of meaning and of, of what I want to accomplish. So why is, this the, why is this the end of the book? It's not the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning inaugurates our life of work, the project of the work that it takes to build the land of Israel. You know, Many people would argue that it's, it's paganism and the crafting the idols that led people into the Iron Age. After all, they were so busy making these different idols, and Jews weren't. And often Jews were stuck sort of in the Stone Age because we were not engaged in this metal work. The Torah is saying you don't have to be pagan to advance your, the, the dignity that comes with work. Engage in holy work, work in the Mishkan, engage in every kind of craft, every kind of blechet machshevet, this crafty work that requires so much intelligence, so much craftiness. Engage in that. And indeed, that will launch you not into a pagan world like the others, not into the simply Iron Age, but it will launch you into a holy, a holy life of, of a practical country that will work and it will all begin 
will have begun and you will have learned your craft in the sanctuary. And you'll take it out into the work field and the workplace. And then you will indeed build a country. We had three questions. Why does the Torah begin with Shabbat? We have to, we have to correct that. It's not just it began with Shabbat. It began with the mitzvah of doing work. Why the emphasis on lacha? Because that's what they're about to embark on, is a life of work in the land of Israel. But let it be holy work. And why is this the end of the book? It's the end of the book because it inaugurates, as Moses Mendelssohn said, it inaugurates all the work they'll be doing. But since we began on a holy foot, so to speak, hopefully that'll put us on a good footing to, be, to continue to work in the spirit of holiness to build a just and a holy society. Thank you for joining us here on Anshay Svar Bethel Emmeth Congregation here in Memphis, Tennessee. Join us each week for our discussions of the Parsha, holidays, questions of how to Judaism. And thanks to Jason Lefkowitz for his technical assistance. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.